Well, the Voyager spacecraft right now is about three million miles away from Neptune and headed toward the far reaches of our solar system and eventually out into interstellar space. And with me is Gentry Lee, space scientist, author, and general observer of Voyager and all that's taken place. Gentry, what happens next for Voyager? What's it likely to encounter? It's likely to encounter nothing and then more of nothing, Dan. It's going to do some very important measurements, however, for our understanding of the sun and how its solar wind influences the entire area of the solar system. But it will not see anything again like Triton. In fact, most of us will never again have a moment like that one today when the first picture came to our mind of liquid nitrogen sitting beneath the surface of, of Triton exploding up into the air, picking up those particulate matters of hydrocarbons left there and dumping those black streamers. That's a moment to remember forever. Now, uh, Larry Soderblom, who is a geologist with the Voyager team, described all of this not as an ending, but perhaps an end of a beginning. It really is. If the historians were trying to put, to put things into type today, what they would say is this is the end of the age of the great discoveries. It's sort of like Henry the Navigator back in the 15th century sent out the first ships and said, run up and down the coast of Africa and find out what you can and then tell me what's there. Then he would get together with his sailors and his captains and they would send more ships back. That's what we're in the process of doing. We have now taken one quick look at everybody except Pluto, and now we're going to go back. Magellan will go back to Venus, Galileo back to Jupiter and its system, and I am absolutely certain it'll only be weeks or months before someone will have a plan to go back to Neptune and its wonderful moon Triton. But Gentry, uh, are we going to see pictures like we're seeing here on the screen in our lifetime again from any of these probes? To go back to Neptune requires, if you go directly from the Earth, 40 years. The only way you can do it in a reasonable amount of time, which is 20 years or so, is to go by Jupiter first. I believe the next time we can even use Jupiter is 30 years in the future. I'm putting a bet right now on 2018. Stay tuned, folks. Titan. We'll see it again in 30 years. But even so, this is, this is the most, uh, photo, in terms of photographs, this is it for most of us, isn't it? This is it. It's the end of the beginning, as Larry said, but what a magnificent set of discoveries were made. Just like the entire solar system has been changed in the last decade. No one would have believed there was a place with volcanic uh, eruptions like Io, sulfur dioxide flying all over the place. And no one would have believed at the end there could be a place like Triton with liquid nitrogen pools exploding through the surface and carrying hydrocarbons high up into that thin, tenuous atmosphere of nitrogen. It's an absolute miracle. And if I had told you that these things existed a decade ago, you would have told me that I was writing fiction. Well, you are doing that, as a matter of fact. You and uh, Arthur C. Clarke are collaborating on some fiction. So what does this do to science fiction writers? I'll bet you that right now, out there throughout the world, are people being energized by what they have seen. I can imagine the artists and the, uh, the, the writers are just chomping at the bit to sit down and write about ice mobiles racing across the surface of Triton, dodging in and out of fountains of, of liquid nitrogen. And I'll bet that very soon, even our friends in Hollywood will be doing the same thing. So this doesn't make it uh, harder for science fiction writers, but easier, a, a more fertile field for the imagination to plow? Nothing that we have invented in our minds has ever turned out to be quite as magnificent and wonderful as the real world of nature. The greatest stimulus to the imagination is knowledge, because that is where it all begins. But some people will say that they are disappointed that even though we've been all through the solar system except for Pluto, we found no sign of life. But we've just begun. There are a hundred billion stars like the sun in this Milky Way galaxy alone, and the number of galaxies is a one followed by 18 to 21 zeros. Someday, somewhere, most of us believe we will find some group of chemicals risen to consciousness who also are aware of their own existence. So you think somewhere out there, Voyager may yet knock on somebody's door? I don't know if there's an extraterrestrial garbage person who will sweep Voyager up and listen to that record, but I would bet that someday, somehow, we will find some other creature that is aware of its existence and perhaps of ours. Gentry Lee, thank you very much for joining us. I'm Dan Blackburn, CNN Live at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena.